wanna do a quick video for anybody out there who needs to align uh, their T56 bell housing. And a the, the lot of the sites uh, forms say it's not possible, you just have to trust it. That is not entirely true. Um, the reason they say that is these uh, QuickTime or T56 stock bell housings, for the most part, do not have a concentric circle in the middle for the transmission like a T5 would bolt in and your input bearing retainer plugs directly into that. So you can't, um, on the bellsing itself, you cannot do a dial indicator and get an accurate reading. So this is what you have to do. You gotta pull your front transmission plate. Doesn't matter what type of T56 you have, any T56, if you pull the front plate, this is uh, what you're gonna get. Um, and I'll go over pulling the front plate in a minute if you're worried about it, it's not a big deal. So put your bell housing on. In my case, I've got this quick time uh, scatter shield here. Bolt it on, put your, make sure your dowels are seated correctly and go ahead and torque it up. Then do the same thing with the front plate. You're gonna bolt on your front plate from your T56 and then you're gonna put your, uh, make sure you, were, you I have the counter shaft bearing out, but make sure you leave in the, um, this would be your input shaft bearing. Uh, race, leave that in. And then what I've done here, as you can see, I've got a magnetic base going straight through onto the flywheel there. No clutch, just a flywheel. And it's not touching, it's barely missing. What you can then do is you can take your dial indicator, it's just as simple as possible here. Just go ahead and put that on there. And then you can align it here. And then, um, Actually, I think I did this, there you go, it's that way that I did it. You can, you can put it in here and you'll tighten this down here and you can actually read the reading off of the race itself. The race is a precision machine thing and it's gonna be perfect. So once you lock this nut down right there, you'll be able to rotate your engine and get your, the reading that you were looking for as if you had done it on the bell housing through the concentric circle that most other transmissions have. So on this particular bell housing, I found, I was able to find my low spot was here. And so I zeroed it out right here. It's right in between these two marks actually. It was about zero right here. That was my low spot. My high spot uh, would obviously be 180 degrees out. Let me take this off. My high spot was right here in between these two marks. So it's basically straight across, okay? So I had zero here and I had about 23 thousandths here. What that tells me is divided by two, my offset, I'm out of it, oh, about 11 and a half thousandths. Um, so it's your, your spec, your, your uh, within tolerance is five thousandths, but I'm about 12 thousandths out, which isn't any good. So I have ordered uh, 14 thousandths offset dowel pins, which will plug in here. They're made by a company called, Mc oh, I just knocked that off, made by McRobinson. And they're the best dowel pins I have found. Um, they allow you to adjust them in place. Everybody says they're good stuff, so I ordered those. They'll be here in a couple days. But what they are is they go in here and they're square into the block, but then they're offset by the, the, the amount you order, which in my case is 14,000. So they come in 7, 14, and 21 thousandths. So uh, as you rotate it, it'll move the whole bell housing any which way you want it to go. But you, you have to keep them parallel. They have two slots in them, so you'll keep the slots parallel to each other, and that'll move the bell housing any direction you need it to go. In my case, because this is the low spot here, this is my high spot at uh, 23 thousandths ish, um, I need to move my bell housing in that direction. Parallel, just right down that way with, on this line. So if you were to draw a line, split this here, that's the parallel axis I need to go on to, to move it. So I'll move that 14 thousandths <clears throat> and that should put me uh, within my 5,000 spec because it'll actually read up to be, let's see, at about, yeah, it'll actually be about um, 2,000 south for, it would be about, yeah, it'd be about two and a half, three thousand south when I'm done, which will be within spec. So okay, that's if everything goes according to plan, of course. But so the way I can tell that there is, this is my low spot on my dial indicator. So if this is the low spot here, and as it rotates around, it's compressing the needle in that means the bell housing is already this way too much. So if I push it this way, the half the distance, then I should get uh, half the reading here and half the reading here, or zero and zero. 
I know it's kind of confusing, but if you've done some research on it, it'll help to understand what I'm talking about. But this is a way to do a T56 um, dial-in for the bell housing. And this is nice because it takes into correction everything. A lot of people say, well, you have to count on the pins, the dial pins on this front plate to be accurate, which they generally are. And you have to make sure that the, the drilling and the bell housing is accurate, which it's an aftermarket bell housing. So it's gonna, you can't assume. Factories usually fit pretty good, but uh, aftermarkets, who knows? Especially if you've had any line honing done, which will raise the crankshaft up in the bore a uh, few thousandths off of its <clears throat> original center line. But anyway, that um, this is what you need to do. I would highly recommend this to anybody running an aftermarket bell housing. I didn't do it the first couple times and I paid for it. I had clutch issues, dis disengagement issues. It wouldn't come apart. So um, one of my clutch disengagement issues I resolved was this. This is my front input bearing retainer right here. You'll notice this is um, where your throw up bearing rides on a for example, a Cobra TPT6 uh, transmission, they use these, some of these hydraulics, but this is a, a manual slide for a throw bearing. And this, you know, this is polished right here. And this is a twin disc clutch. There's one disc there. This is the top one here. That's the bottom one there. Notice that hub's nice and black. That hub down there has a nice shiny ring on it. So I discovered that while this is releasing, the throat bearing releases the clutch. The pressure plate itself down here might be releasing enough, but there's not enough travel for the clutch disc to decompress off the stack to keep it from dragging. So my clutch was always dragging, grinding away on this. So simple solution. I've got my travel, you can tell it's right here. I got plenty of room. I'm gonna take off about a quarter inch. That'll make sure I have plenty of release travel for my clutches to release. Um, yeah, they were stacking up on the floater plate there, couldn't get past the floater plate, <clears throat> so that'll help that. Now, as far as removing, um, as far as removing the front plate, it's not that big a deal. Um, I happen to build transmissions. Um, I do a lot of them, so this isn't a big deal for me especially, but it shouldn't be uh, too intimidating for anybody else either. What you're going to find is when you take off, uh, when you undo all these bolts here, that's fine, you just undo the bolts. That's the first thing you do. Crack the cases, and there's gonna be a couple of pry points here you can crack on right there, under this here, and one down here as well. Let's see, yeah, right there it is. Crack it loose, then put your hand on the front input shaft and keep it to the transmission as you pull the plate away. So you're gonna pull this plate away, keep the, the input shaft in, and that'll keep it set on this. Um, this is called your pocket bearing here. Um, I had to replace this because I towed it for 800 miles and I burned this up. Fortunately, it's a bearing, so I didn't jack the shaft or the input shaft. I just had to pull the race and put a new bearing in, but that's besides the point. Um, what you need to do is just pull that plate off, keep the input shaft to the engine, or I'm sorry, to the transmission, take the plate off completely, pull it out of the way. Then what you're going to do is you're going to notice, um, I don't have my input shaft right here, but the input shaft will pull right out. The only reason it'll come right out of here, you'll just be able to take it right out. The only reason I said to um, keep it in there is so you can see the stack up of the blocker ring right here. Um, and also so you don't drop it on the, on the floor and chip the teeth or something like that. But once you get the plate out of the way, carefully remove the input shaft, then this piece right here is going to fall. This is going to fall out of here. And what this is, you'll notice on the back side, it's got three indexes there. That fits on the synchro keys. This is your synchronizer back there. That's your fourth and third gear synchronizer. In fourth gear, it's a straight lock, one to one ratio. And what this does is this slider locks this main shaft onto the input shaft gear, which I've got the input over on the other table. But when you put this back in, it doesn't matter. Just slide it until it drops onto one of the three, and I'm not doing a good job of it. There it is, it drops in. You can tell it's locked into those three keyways. And that there, and then you can put your input shaft right back in and then put the plate back on. You gotta be careful though, you've also got these shift forks uh, right here and here. These have uh, pilot, basically they pilot into the front plate, so carefully put some lubrication on those and slide those up too. You won't find this in any of yours. This is my custom thing if you've seen on my other video. This is a, I run an ATF pump for drag racing. When I run this thing hard, all my fluid sloshes to the back. I've already burned up a, a, a headset, a cluster, and an input. So this sp constantly sprays. Um, when I'm drag racing, I have a switch that I turn on street driving. I don't care about it. 
But uh, drag racing, I'll turn this on to keep this headset real wet and full of ATF. Okay, so going back, let me pull this block ring off here for you. Over here, this is the input shaft. It's in perfect condition. I've pressed in a new race into there after burning that other pocket burning up. Getting it out's a trick. Putting it in is not hard. But this blocker ring is what synchronizes fourth gear. So when you're driving down the road and you go from third to fourth, this the synchronizer uh, initially starts applying pressure to this cone. And this is a sandpaper type material here on the inside. This actually slows the input shaft down because at third gear you have this. This represents uh, engine RPM coming off the clutch. And as you push the clutch in and slide this over, it releases it from the clutch. The clutch can spin and this will slow down. And then once it matches the speed of the main shaft, the, the slider will lock all the way over onto the second set of teeth here, which is part of the gear. And will lock it into fourth gear or one to one ratio straight through through the transmission. Uh, vice versa, if you're going from, if you're upshifting from fourth to third, uh, want to get some more power, you do the same thing. This comes over, but now you're going to be spinning this faster. So if you're going from fourth to third, this starts to come over and it speeds the shaft up and then locks on and then you have a higher gear with more torque available. So that's the basics of it, but that's pretty simple. Don't be intimidated to take off the front plate. Let me put this back over here. Don't be intimidated to take off your front plate to um, to set this up. It's well worth the time and it'll save your clutch. It'll save the wear on your internals, on your transmission, because it does uh, change the angle, the way that that input wants to ride on that main shaft. And you'll be a lot happier. So in this particular motor, is a turbo 347. A lot of you have seen this in some other videos, um, but uh, this makes a, a, about the motor. I would say at the motor around six. Oh, motor probably puts out around 600. But uh, at the tires right now, we're putting out just over 500. So, but anyway, it's uh, not too bad. And this video has gotten far too long. So, any questions, just uh, just send me a, a message and I'll reply. Thanks.